that I want to make is that it's not your herbarium, it's your institution's herbarium, and this should be a constant refrain every time you talk to your administrators. So, as an herbarium director or curator, you have a four-part mission. First, preservation of the specimen. Secondly, research, education, public service. Standard thing, because here's where most universities focus on these last three, but as a collection, right, preservation comes first. However, the fifth part of your four-part mission is to educate the ever-changing parade of administrators who may not understand what a herbarium is or why it is important. And so if they are chemists or physicists or economists or lawyers or however they got into that position, there's no reason to assume that they actually know anything about an herbarium. And if they have digitized other things, like an amazing collection of slides that your university may have, the first question is going to be, can we throw this all away after we image it? And the answer is, of course, no. So you may be responsible for the herbarium, but it's not your herbarium. It is your institution's herbarium, and you need to start practicing in front of a mirror every time you get up. It's not my herbarium, it's my institution's herbarium, and it's their responsibility, not yours, to digitize it. So for the IU herbarium, we have just over 161,000 specimens, and we were able to completely curate, reorganize according to ABG3, image, transcribe, and georeference the entire herbarium in five years, mostly employing student workers at a cost of about $750,000. So here's where, when I started this, people told me, this is a 10-year project, not a five-year project. But they said, we are only going to give you money for five years, figure out a way to get it done. One of the things that I'll point out is employing student workers is a really, really good idea. In part because there's a lot of repetitive tasks that nobody who is sane would want to spend 40 hours a week doing that. Whereas hiring students, or if you have volunteers coming in, working on two to three hour shifts, the per hour productivity is incredibly high because they're on task and they view this as an interesting diversion from studying organic chemistry or whatever, and so you get through things very, very quickly. So think about the student workers, and this is also a selling point to your administration because it's giving them employment opportunities that are not merely working in a cafeteria or refiling library books in the library. So the institutional funding strategy. The first thing to do is to band together with whatever other natural history collections are on campus and present the need for common cyber infrastructure support just like other institutional functions. So if you're at a university, hey, they have IT people who handle registration, the bursar's office, right, student records, all sorts of other things. The library, if you've got digital library facilities, and the critical thing is pointing out, hey, this is their responsibility. It is not your responsibility, and ask them how are they going to look after their collection and by banding together with the other natural history collections, it's not a special favor for the herbarium, but rather a common need for any collections on campus. If you don't have a lot of other natural history collections, go as far afield as you can to find other collections that also need that same sort of cyber infrastructure support. Institutions are increasingly focusing on this because it's part of their overall strategy. So think like an administrator here. Secondly, and this is really important, ask your Office of Risk Management or whatever the comparable title is in your institution to come in and conduct a risk assessment but also a valuation of the herbarium that is detailed in a short written report that you can then feed back to your administrators. So the risk assessment might be, are you in a basement? Are you subject to potential flooding? So here's where, when Hurricane Katrina came through, we know what happened to New Orleans. Right? Do you have a good fire suppression system? We know what happened to Rio. Unfortunately, the herbarium was deemed not sufficiently important to be kept in the main building and had already been moved to an outbuilding. So while the main right, collection in Rio de Janeiro went up in flames, fortunately, the herbarium was spared there. 
but also get evaluation and do not provide the people some sense of what you think each specimen is. So here's where if you think, oh, well, if I'm going to insure this when I mail specimens on loan, I'm going to insure it for $10 a specimen, don't get them a number to start with. Let them figure it out because our office came back and said, even if you couldn't replace 25% of your specimens, the rest of the collection, the other 75%, is probably in the range of 25 to $50 million. So it was an order of magnitude greater than what I had thought if we were just calculating at $10 a specimen. But here's where they will love to do this because most institutions are self-insured on small things. If somebody steals your laptop, they go, we're just going to replace it. They don't involve an insurance company, but they are insured for catastrophic loss. So here's where if a tornado comes through and wipes out our herbarium, the fact that they already have on record a valuation, that's where they go to their insurance company and say, we not only lost the building that's worth $3 million, but we lost right, a $37 million collection that was in that $3 million building. Your Office of Risk Management will love the fact that you're asking them to do this, and I can give you examples of institutions that were forced by the Office of Risk Management to provide new facilities because of the threats of flood and other problems. Here's where invite the appropriate hierarchy of campus administrators. Start with your department chairs, associate chairs for research, whatever, to come tour the herbarium accompanied by faculty members and graduate students right, who can provide short testimonials about why the herbarium is important in their research. It's one thing for you to stand up there and say, this is important, but if you think about what most administrators are encountering, they're encountering faculty members who have a research program that belongs to them. If I move to another institution, I take my research program with me. I do not take the herbarium with me. And so they're used to having people come and say, I really want you to do it because it'll help me personally. Whereas if you bring in other people who are using the facility that you are managing, that becomes a much more important testimonial rather than you saying, I would really appreciate you helping me out to help with the herbarium here. So involve other people there. Explain that the herbarium is one of over 3,000, Barbara, what's the current number? 3,100 facilities that form a collaborative global network providing environmental big data. Most administrators have no idea what the number is, nor the fact that we work in this highly collaborative fashion. So if you think about, right, subatomic physics, hey, they all go off to Switzerland and have a big party. Not all of them, right, a lot of it's done remotely, but the point is, they think of big science in terms of physics, but we do big science, we just do it in a diffuse, collaborative way. Give a departmental seminar on digital herbarium in the 21st century so that the colleagues in your department understand and support your efforts. Here's where you can think about your own colleagues. Yeah, some people use the herbarium, some people don't, but they know that it's important. Other people think, hey, this is some leftover from 19th century science. So showing them what the future provides uh, is really important for them understanding why it is that we're doing this. Provide individual demonstrations of the finished product from a completely digitized herbarium. So not only have we digitized all of our specimens, but for Indiana, we went through and coded all of the morphology and phenology for all of our species. And so we have a delta style multiple access key there where you can zoom in rather than saying, what of all the species in Indiana, if you know where you are, what county, and what time was collected, all of a sudden that universe gets really, really small, and people go, wow, this is really cool, because with a few characters where you don't need to know all the terminology, almost anybody can identify almost any plant in Indiana. And emphasize the increasingly stringent federal requirement for data management plans, grant proposals, and also the emerging standards for digital publication. It went from a time where we said, oh yeah, the factory specimens are in NISH, go find them, to saying, no, we want these to be individually enumerated, but as specimens get digitized, right, with digital publication, we're going to be in a position of being able to hyperlink, right, information from molecular papers straight to an image of that factory specimen in that digital publication. And then, when you get ready, 
go ahead and put in your ask, as it's called, to your administration requesting funding in which your department contributes something, your college contributes something, the upper administration shares part of the cost. If you've got a good digital library program, get buy-in from them so that you're pointing out that this is a one-time service project that provides paid learning opportunities for the students, but also contributes to your institution's public service. A good analogy is, hey, you don't need to replace your roof every year, but every now and then, you need to replace the roof, and this is a one-time thing that will bring that collection into the modern era. So with that, I think I've got plenty of time, and I'm hoping not only for questions, but discussions with people here. Thank you.